Hello and welcome to day 12 of the 2022 FIFA World Cup, and welcome to the final day of the group stage. If you're watching this video as it premieres, then in real life the night games are already in progress. I wanted to get this video out, ne out yesterday, but I was just too tired. We begin with the match between South Korea and Portugal. The Portuguese side currently sits in third, while South Korea sits in fourth, already eliminated. For the Koreans, it has been a terrible group stage. Despite star forward Hyungmin Sun's cap captaincy, the Republic has recorded two straight losses, first to Uruguay, then to Ghana. Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal started things off with a shocking 1-0 loss to Ghana, thanks to a scrutinized last-second goal by Andre Ayew. However, they were able to turn the tide back in their favor with a 1-0 win over Uruguay. Even so, they're staring down elimination going into this match. Cristiano Ronaldo will try and keep his ch his last chance to win the World Cup alive as we go to the Lusail Stadium for the first match of the day. South Korea line up at a 4-3-3. They've got Kim seung gyu in goal at the back. Kim jin Su, Kim yong Gwang, Kim Min-jae, and Kim Tae-hwan. In the middle, Lee Jae-sung with jung woo Yun and Hwang im Boom. Hyung min Sun leads them in the front, the captain, along with Huang yui and Huang Hee-chan. As I mentioned, South Korea, no wins, no losses, no draws. They've already... No wins, two losses, and no draws. What am I saying? They've already been eliminated from this World Cup. Portugal still have a chance, but they need to capitalize today. As we take a look at their lineup, it's a 4-3-3 as well. Rui Patricio in goal. At the very back, it's going to be Guerrero, Diaz, Pepe, and Cancelo. Up front, they have Neves, Fernandez, and Carvalho. And up front, it is Leao with Silva and the captain, Cristiano Ronaldo, in the middle. We've heard that Ronaldo has accepted a lucrative deal from a Saudi Arabian club, of course. Time will tell whether or not he takes it, but for now, he represents Portugal. And he's trying to lead them to the knockout stages of this World Cup as we are underway. South Korea in red, Portugal in white. Here in our first match of the day at the Loose Sales, at the Loose Sales Stadium. Kim Jin Su to Lee Jae Sung in the opening minutes of this match. Huang Hee Chan, now Huang Ui Jo. Hyung Min Sun, of course, the player to watch here today for the Korea Republic. Korea Republic. I call him South Korea, but I guess the Korea Republic is the official FIFA name. And of course. The other player to watch will be Cristiano Ronaldo, who has the ball now, but has it taken from him quickly by Kim Min Jae. He goes down as Kim Tae Hwan takes the ball. Ruben Diaz gets it back for Portugal. Now Ronaldo to William. Into the air it goes, but it'll come down at the feet of Kim Tae Hwan. Korea have it, but not for long. Leao with the back foot to Ronaldo. Took him a while to get there, but now Leao to Bernardo. And Kim Seong Gu with the save. First corner kick of the matchup now for Portugal. Fernandez with the header into the hands of Kim Seung Gyu. Easy catch, or at the very least, he made it look easy. South Korea have the ball once again. Huang Hee Chan intercepted by Pepe. William now to Ruben Diaz. And Ruben Diaz to Fernandez. Rafael. Ronaldo. Leao. In a battle for the ball, he keeps it, and it's 1-0 Portugal. Leao putting the first goal of the match on the board. And it proves that all is not lost for the Portuguese side. I assume there's a great celebra celebration going on behind that ad board, but I'll blame the cameraman for that. Let's take a look at the replay. Decent attempt from the goalkeeper, but in the end... Portugal able to take the 1 0 lead. And maybe we'll get the celebration here. Well, just the starting part. And this time it's blocked by the fans. In the 25th minute, Leao opens the scoring for Portugal. And South Korea with the ball to start things off again. However, not for long, an, inter an interception gets it right back to Portugal. Leao to Rafael. 
Now the pass to Fernandez. Back foot intercepted by Huang and Baum. Takes Kim Tae Hwan a little bit to get. Takes Kim Tae Hwan a while to get there, but he eventually does. Now the pass to Huang Hee Chan and Huang Goi Zhou. Past the 30 minute mark, a 1 0 lead for Portugal. Huang Hee Chan with a back foot to Goi Zhou, trying to tie it up. 10 minutes to play here in the first half, and the corner kick coming up for South Korea. And now it's just going to be a short pass from Kim Jin Soo to Huang Hee Chan. Now Hyung Min Son backwards. William will take it. Now lay out to Neves as the Portuguese side gets the ball once again. Cristiano Ronaldo taking it. Korea with the majority of the possession, 53%, 47%. Despite this, still a 1 0 lead for Portugal. And it may be a yellow card here. Nope. Let's see. Yes, indeed it is. Huang Hee Chan shown the yellow as we take a look at the replay. Slide tackle from the back. Didn't seem to affect him that much. Was able to remain stable and on his feet, but nonetheless, a free kick for Portugal in the final few minutes of the first half. A chance to make it 2-0. Looks like Bernardo's going to take the kick. Short pass to William to get things started. Now Ronaldo, Bernardo. And Ronaldo again. Layout takes the shot. Kim seong able to get it away. And now one last corner. In the closing moments of this half, one minute added on. Fernandez with the ball. Layout and William. And Kim seong falls down on the ball for one last save as the first half comes to an end. 45 minutes in here at the Lusail Stadium. It's a 1-0 lead for Portugal thanks to Rafael Leo. We'll have the second half in a matter of moments, but first, let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Well, Rafael Leal could prove to be the hero for the Portuguese here today as Cristiano Ronaldo gets us started in the second half. A 1-0 lead for Portugal after 45 minutes. And I mentioned before that this is Ronaldo's final World Cup. So, therefore, his final chance to win the World Cup, which is the one trophy, pretty much, that has evaded him in his illustrious career. The FA Cup the Ballon d'Or, the European Championship, and of course the Champions League many times over. Still unable to win a World Cup. Kim seong gyo steps out in front to make the save. Referee's whistle sounds, and now a free kick coming up for Portugal. Another chance to make it 2-0 here in the first 10 minutes of this second half. And Ronaldo looks like he's going to take it. Famous for scoring on penalties. Can he make that magic happen once more? Faked. Ronaldo! Oh. Well, it was a good shot, but still unable to get it done. 
And the goal kick coming up for South Korea now. Kim seung kicks it away. Young min Sun. And the whistle sounds. Referee stopping the game for something or other. Free kick for Portugal in their own side of the pitch. Pepe sends it into the air. Jung Woo Young with the header. Now Huang Hui Jo. And now we're in a 1 0 lead for Portugal here at the Lusail Stadium trying to keep their World Cup hopes alive. But Lee Jae Sung off the crossbar. Pepe. Jung Woo Young has it away. Korea still with the ball. Into the air. William. Young Min Son, Ruben Diaz gets it away. As I was saying, Portugal trying to move into the knockout stage. They're in third. Going into this match, but Ronaldo makes it 2 0. And now trying to ensure Portugal's spot in the knockouts. The greatest of all time. One of the greatest of all time. Puts it into the net. Let's take a look at the replay this time. It's Hypermotion 2 technology bringing it to you. An unbelievable long shot goal by Cristiano Ronaldo makes it 2 0 for the Portuguese. And now their hopes of the knockout stage even higher. The hopes of one player, one legend, as well, the, as, well as the hopes of an entire nation. Ruben Diaz. Now Rafael. Back to Diaz. And they're singing Viva Ronaldo here at the Lucille Stadium. Viva Ronaldo indeed. One of the greatest in history. His final chance to win the World Cup. I'm hoping that he can do it as well as many others, but I'm also hoping that Lionel Messi can do it. One of those two in their last chance here. A lot of people, myself included, hoping for an Argentina versus Portugal final, or at least hoping they'll meet sometime in the knockout stage. Korea scoring now for the first time with about seven minutes to go, and although they may be out of the group stage, they still get one goal in this match as a bit of a consolation. Out of the tournaments, they're in fourth, and it looks like they're going to stay in fourth unless they can come back and do something big in these final seven minutes. But then again, they've already been eliminated from the World Cup. Six minutes to play. Ronaldo gets us started again. As Portugal look to lock it down. William to Bernardo. William again. And Ronaldo with a pass to Neves. Fernandez sends it into the air. Down to Bernardo. Now pass to William. William to Bernardo. And that's three. And now a last minute goal. The celebration beginning on the pitch. Flooding the corner. The substitutes, the coaches, everyone. As Portugal has surely secured the victory here today. And maybe even with that, secured their spot in the knockout stage. They'll definitely move up into second with this performance. Ghana in, Ghana in first. With a perfect record so far, they face Uruguay next, and only then, only after that match, will we know who goes through for sure in Group H. But there is one thing that we do know right now, and that is that the Portuguese have taken the victory in our first match of the day. A 3-1 to one win over South Korea. Leao Bernardo and, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo scoring here today 
to give a big boost of hope to the nation of Portugal. There you see Ronaldo, two shots and one goal. We'll take a look at the highlights before we go back to the International Broadcast Center. Once again, the final score, Portugal 3, South Korea 1. With that, Portugal move up into second place. However, their participation in the knockout stage is not a sure thing. Coming up next from the Albite Stadium, Group H comes to its close as Ghana take on Uruguay. Ghana are chasing a perfect record after a shock win over Portugal, followed by a victory over South Korea. Uruguay, on the other hand, opened their campaign with a dominant 4-0 win over South Korea, but lost 1-0 to Portugal in their second match. Luis Suarez and company are not eliminated yet. A win over Ghana today could possibly send them into the round of 16, knocking Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal out in the process. All will be revealed after these next 90 minutes, so let's go to the Albite Stadium to get things started. Ghana line up in a 4-2-3-1. They've got Sigi in goal. At the very back, it's Raman, Dejiku, Amarte, and Lante. Abdul Samed with Parti in front of those four. Up near the front, it's Sulemana, Kudus, and Ayu. Andre Ayu, the captain who scored the match-winning goal against Portugal. Number 19, Williams, is up at the front of the pitch for this final game in Group H. Portugal watching on Uruguay trying to get into the round of 16 as we take a look at their starting lineup it's a 4-4-2 Roche in goal at the back it's going to be Vina, Godin, Jimenez and Araujo in the middle they've got Derasqueta, Bentancur, Torreira and Valverde and up front the two star players Luis Suarez and Edison, Edinson Cavani here we go at the Albite Stadium. Ghana in white, Uruguay in blue. Underway. In the final match of Group H, the eyes of Portugal on this one. South Korea have already been eliminated. Ghana have already qualified for the round of 16. They've got a perfect record. The player to watch here today, number 19, Williams, for Ghana, as well as Andre Ayu, the captain. As I was saying, Ghana have already qualified for the round of 16 thanks to the thanks to a 
record with two wins, no losses, and no draws. A perfect record so far. If they win today, then they will achieve perfection in the group stage. It's highly unlikely that they'll go all the way, but you never know. If they can beat Portugal, maybe they can go all the way. Cavani? Valverde? Although France might be a threat. Araujo, and that's offside. As we take a look here. But yeah, early predictions. Going into the round of 16 tomorrow, I think France are going to take it all. I don't know. But after that 6-0 win over Tunisia, utter dominance, and 5-0 against Australia... They're just, they've just proved that they're really good. However, they did, lo they did lose to Denmark 2-0, so maybe they're not infallible, maybe they're not as infallible as I think. Andre Ayu to Kudus, now Sulamana, sends it into the air, comes down to Tariq, and now Ayu, Godin, takes it back for Uruguay, now Vina. 20 minutes in, still nil-nil here at the Albite Stadium. Kudus with the slide, now Tariq is gonna get the ball back. Ayu sends it into the air, Jimenez with a header. Suarez with another header, and now Valverde. With a pass to Edinson Cavani. Djiku with the interception before it can get to Luis Suarez. Ayu to Kudus. Now Inaki. Tariq. Inaki again. 30 minutes in, still nil-nil. But Inaki looking to change that, and he will! 1-0, gonna take the lead. And Portugal will be happy about that. Cristiano Ronaldo watching on. And I don't mean to sound biased, but it is a major event. One of the greatest of all time. Playing in his final World Cup. The end of the old guard. The end of an era. As we take a look at Inyaki Williams. Putting the first goal on the board. Ghana 1-0 as we see the Hypermotion 2 replay. Thank you, EA. The Next Generation feature is giving us an in-depth look at certain goals. Valverde looking to break through, tie it up, but Zico will take it from him. Almost goes out, but it's a good save. Now, Baba. Araujo takes it back for Uruguay. A few more minutes to go here in the first half. Finds Cavani, and now Cavani saved by Ziggy. Corner kick coming up. Torreira to Valverde. Sulemana will take it from him. Torreira again. Out it goes. Sulemana now with the, throw, with the throw in for Uruguay. Salis to Baba. Sulemana again. Into Uruguay's half the pitch. One minute at it on. Look at him go. But he needs to make the cross here. Finds Partey. He goes down, and there goes the whistle. The wall has been built. Andre Ayu to take the free kick to close things out. Here in the first half, fakes it, and it's Partey sending it over the crossbar and sending us to halftime. A 1-0 lead for Ghana over Uruguay at the moment, looking for a perfect record in the group stage. That's a good thing for Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal. If Uruguay win here today, they're into the round of 16, which means Portugal are out. 45 minutes to go here at the Albite Stadium. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half.
Well, only one highlight to speak of, but a very important highlight indeed. The goal that made it 1-0 for Ghana. Again, as I've mentioned many times before, they're looking for a perfect record in the group stage, which means three wins, no losses, no draws. Portugal here rooting against Uruguay and hoping that they can make it to the round of 16, because if Uruguay win here, Portugal are out. And it's quite ironic because Ghana were able to defeat Portugal in the first match of the campaign. Now Portugal finds themselves on Ghana's side as they hope to get into the knockout stage here. Uh, South Korea already eliminated. They were eliminated going into, into today. Arisketa moving up, looking to score. Amarte with the interception. As I was saying, uh, South Korea already eliminated... No wins, no draws, three losses. The opposite of a perfect record. Arasketa, look at the score, and he does! And it's tied up between Ghana and Uruguay. And now things are going to get interesting here in Group H. The drama of the final day of the group stage. As I said when we went into this, all will be revealed after these 90 minutes. It's now 30 minutes. We're past the 60 minute mark. 1-1 between Ghana and Uruguay. Inyaki to Kudus to get things start again, started again. I need to enunciate more. Parte. Now Tariq. And now Ghana quickly deep into Uruguay's side of the pitch. Araujo with the interception on his chest. Jimenez now to Valverde. And Suarez with a pass to Arisqueta. Let's see what's going on here. Could be a yellow. Arisqueta's down. And here comes the ref. Yellow card shown to Daniel Marte. We'll take a look at the replay because I didn't quite see what happened there. Slide tackle from behind. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, seems a little bit oversold, like professional wrestling, but maybe I'm wrong. Nonetheless, the free kick to be taken by Luis Suarez. Interesting run up there, made me think he was going to send it into the air, but in reality just a short ground pass. Bentancourt to Cavani, and Ziggy makes the save, sends it away into the grandstand. Ghana are already in the round of 16. Uruguay hoping that they can win again here today. Uruguay hoping... No, what am I saying? Portugal hoping that Ghana can win again here today. Because that would mean they're into the knockout stage. Cristiano Ronaldo looking to stay alive in the final World Cup of his career, but he could face an early exit here. You never know. Life takes you by surprise. The end of an era, no matter what happens today, if they get all the way to the final on the 16th of December, or 15th or whatever, it'll be before the Beagle Sports Network final will be before the real final. I think it's that Thursday. I don't know when the date is. It's the 15th. Whether Portugal will make it to December 15th, or whether they're out here on December 2nd. It is the end for Ronaldo. And it is the end for his arch rival, Lionel Messi. Less than 10 minutes to go here at the Albite Stadium. Cavani, now Arisqueta, takes the shot over the crossbar. Nunez coming on for Edison, Edinson Cavani. Six minutes to go here at the Albide Stadium between Ghana and Uruguay, our second match of the day. A high-stakes Group H matchup, and I've mentioned the uh, standings multiple times over. Inaki with the ball, takes the shot! Oh! Close. Close, but no cigar. It goes to the left. Wadoi coming on for Raman Baba. Roche to Torreira. Vecino into the air. Valverde. Now 
Nunez. Salusu will take it. Three minutes added on. Here at the Albite Stadium. What can you do with three minutes? Less than that now. Vecino to Suarez. Vecino again. Suarez again. And now, Arisqueta. One on one against the keeper. Ronaldo is out. The journey ends for Cristiano Ronaldo. The end of an era. On December the 2nd, 2022. Uruguay are through to the round of 16. Despair for Portugal. Ecstasy for Uruguay and for Luis Suarez. Tejares Keta with a last minute goal to send Uruguay into the knockout stage. Ghana will not get the perfect record. Actually, the fact that Ghana don't have the perfect record could change things a little bit. I don't know. But I do think that this is the end. We're going to find out. I don't have everything memorized. But we're going to find out once we go back to the International Broadcast Center. It is over. We'll reveal the final standings of Group H after we take a look at the highlights from this match. A high-pressure situation. Ghana into the round of 16, obviously. They were already there to begin with. Uruguay and Portugal will find out after this. The final score, Uruguay 2, Ghana 1. And this may be one of the most dramatic moments in the history of the World Cup. And again, we'll have the results after these highlights. Here we go. Before I reveal these final standings, let me just say that I sincerely apologize for any confusion I may have caused. It turns out that having two wins is only an automatic qualifier if a minority of teams in your group have two wins. We're not doing this, we're not doing this in the FIFA way, the traditional points and stuff. We're doing it with a website that doesn't have that as an option. So things are a little bit different from the real World Cup. But here we go. Uruguay tops the group. Portugal finished second. Ghana shockingly moved down to the third. Remember, I thought they would move... I thought they would get into the round of 16. They didn't. Again, I'm sorry. And South Korea finished fourth. Insane drama on the final day of the group stage. Again, I apologize for any confusion with that goal call against Uruguay. The end of the era. December 2nd. I got caught up in the heat of the moment. It's just insane. A lot of stuff can happen on a high-pressure day like this, but Ronaldo is safe. Ronaldo is secure. Ronaldo is moving on to the round of 16. 
Our first match in Group G is between Serbia and Switzerland. With two losses, Serbia have already been eliminated. I can say that confidently. Switzerland have no wins, no losses, and two draws, so the outlook isn't good for them either. Serbia started things off with a 2-0 loss to the favorites, Brazil, followed by a 2-1 defeat to Cameroon. Switzerland drew 1-1 with Cameroon, and subsequently drew 1-1 with Brazil. I'm not going to keep you here any longer, except for one more apology for my horrible uh, understanding of standings. Let's go to the Albite Stadium once more. Here we go! Embolo kicks things off. Switzerland in red, Serbia in white. And again, I just want to say that I feel really, really stupid right now. Um, but I just want to apologize once again for any confusion that may have occurred in that call saying it was over for Ronaldo. It was a dramatic day, but maybe I over-exaggerated a little bit. I did think it was over, but uh, turns out I was wrong. Whatever. An insane day of action in Group H. We've got the round of 16 coming up tomorrow. I can't wait. At least with that, there won't be any confusion. Vlahovic sends it into the air. Zivkovic takes the shot. Summer with the save. Tadic, headed away by Akanji. Shakiri, now Stefan. Stefan to Akanji, and Stefan again. Embolo. Embolo moving up. Now Shakiri Rajkovic with the save, and Velskovic takes it now for Serbia. Tadic intercepted by Zaka. Froiler. Embolo, Milenkovic, and Kostic. Tomorrow is when it really gets interesting. It's winner go home. And this weekend, after Sunday, we'll be down to eight. Today, we have 32. Tomorrow, we'll have 16. Monday, we'll have eight. Quarterfinals, I believe, are on Wednesday. Sergei heads, er, kicks it away. Mitrovic. Kanji with a pass to Embolo. Now Zaka and Stefan. Shakiri 1 0 Switzerland. Puts it in the back of the net as we cross the 30 minute mark. A 1 0 lead for Switzerland here at the Albite Stadium. Boom. What a goal. Goalkeeper tried his best, but in the end, Switzerland able to come out and make it 1-0. As Serbia kick it off once again. 15 minutes to go here in the first half. And again, I just want to apologize for the confusion in Group H. For, the, for all you Portugal fans, Ronaldo is safe. For Uruguay fans, Suarez and Cavani, and Cavani are safe. For Ghana fans, I'm sorry. Stefan? In South Korea, we already knew they were eliminated. Stefan moving close. Embolo looking to make it 2-0. Roskovic with the save. Embolo takes it back. Stefan. Sergei gets it away. And Vlahovic keeps it going. Vlahovic to Kostic. Now Mitrovic. Vla er, Kostic to Vlahovic. One minute added on. Tadic. Sergei, back foot. Shouldn't have done that. Could have scored there, I think. But Shakiri gets the final touch in the first half. And it is a 1 0 lead for Switzerland after 45 minutes. Serdan Shakiri. Two shots, one goal, and because of him. Again, Switzerland with a 1-0 lead over Serbia as we go to halftime.
back underway here between Serbia and Switzerland. Our third match of four today at the Albite Stadium. Brazil and Cameroon, the final match of the group stage, coming up next. Twelve days of exciting soccer action in the group stage. Again, we started with 32. We'll be down to 16 at the end of today. And tomorrow, as I said before, the round of 16 begins. And that's when things start to get really interesting. Shakiri to Vargas. Rajkovic able to make the save. And now a corner for Switzerland as we come closer to the one-hour mark here at the Albite Stadium. Stefan sends it into the air, but Rajkovic jumps up to make the catch and the save. Away it goes. Elvedi to Whitmer. And now... Referee's whistle blowing. What does he see? I don't know. I don't see it, but it looks like it's going to be a free kick for Serbia. Veljkovic sends it into the air. Zaka has it for a moment. Vlahovic. Now Kostic. Serbia looking to tie it up. And good Elj. Sommer able to make the save. And Rodriguez completes it. We're past the one-hour mark here at the Albite Stadium. Switzerland won Serbia nil in the second to final match of not only Group G, but the group stage as a whole. A high drama, high intensity situation in Group H, accompanied by a commentary gaff. It's in! Vlavic scores! A commentary gaff starting today's coverage off. And as I was saying, Vlavic puts it in the net. I can switch easily. Talking about one thing, then talking about another. Interrupted by goals. A high point can come at any time. That's the one thing about commentating sports. You never want to be. You would never want to get too caught up in your own monologue, because from out of nowhere, something like that could happen, catch you off guard, and then you have to uh, proclaim it, so to speak. Kostic, Dmitrich, Sergei. Zivkovic and Vlahovic looking to score here, but Akanji takes it from him. Gets it to Rodriguez, who passes to Vargas. Now Embolo to Shakiri. And Shakiri moving here. Passes to Vargas. Milenkovic takes it from him. Now Sergei to Vlahovic. Mitrovic and Gurelj. Pavlovic. Kostic. Pavlovic again. Kostic again. Vlahovic, Mitrovic, and Elvedi will take it now for Switzerland. Deep in their own side of the pitch. Less than 10 minutes to go here at the Albite Stadium. 1-1 one, one, so one, one at the moment between Serbia and Switzerland, but that last minute, we saw a last minute goal from Uruguay to give them the win in the group. Could we see a last minute goal here from Switzerland? We do! Shakiri puts it into the net. 2-1. And I believe that victory is assured for the Swiss now. Here at the Albite Stadium, I do not believe they have a chance. But as we saw in Group H, I can be wrong. And I have been wrong. And I'm sure that uh, commentators in real sports get things wrong, but wow. We're moving out of the group stage. This is the final day, as I've said before. Up next, it's Brazil and Cameroon that will close us out officially in this opening round of the World Cup. We'll be down to 16. Once it is all said and done, after the next 90 minutes. But when I say 90, I really mean 10. To break the fourth wall a little bit there. Tadic, and now Mitrovic, Sommer with the save, and it's an amazing save. Two minutes added on, Rodriguez with the ball here for the Swiss. Being pursued, gets it to Embolo, and there is the final whistle. A 2-1 win for Switzerland over Serbia. We'll take a look at the highlights before we go back to the International Broadcast Center for the final match of the day between Brazil and Cameroon. Group H, sorry, Group G coming to its close. 
very, very soon in the entire group stage with that. History has been made today. Will be made again. I, I don't know what I'm saying. So I'll just say this. Switzerland 2, Serbia 1, the final score. Let's look at the highlights. And yet another twist here today, Switzerland moving to first with that win. The favorites to win the whole thing, the World Cup, Brazil, are in second. Speaking of Brazil, they're up next. In the final match of the entire group stage, the side led by Neymar takes on Cameroon. Brazil proved why they're the favorites in their first match of the campaign with a 2-0 win over Serbia. They followed this up with a 1-1 draw against Switzerland. Cameroon drew 1-1 with Switzerland to start things off and defeated Serbia 2 to one in their second match. I wouldn't count them out either. Well, without any further ado, let's finish the group stage once and for all. Brazil versus Cameroon is coming up right now. Here we go. The Lusail Stadium, the, the venue that will host the final of the World Cup on December 15th, playing host to the final match of the 2022 group stage. It is fitting, isn't it? Brazil in yellow, as usual. Cameroon in red and black. And after this, we will know for sure the matchups in the round of 16. Again, that starts tomorrow. Day two is Sunday, and then there will only be eight teams. It's just shocking to me. It's amazing that today we have 32, but not really since... We already know who's out and who isn't. Neymar moving up. And he puts it in. 1-0 Brazil. Very, very quickly. 12 minutes in. And Neymar showing why he is the big star of the team that is the favorite to win the World Cup. Hypermotion 2 technology coming in on this replay. 17.9 meters. The shot taken by Neymar. To put it in here for Brazil, 1-0 within 12 minutes. As I was saying, before that goal, round of 16 tomorrow and Sunday, and then we will have 8, and then 4, and then 2, and then a champion. It goes by fast. Joel Ting takes the shot, Allison makes the save. And I don't know, I just feel like the group stage has gone on for a long time, which it has. It's the majority of the episodes. This is episode 12, and the final will be, what, episode 17? So, there's definitely more group stage than there is, um, knockout. We already know six of the matches in the round of 16. We will reveal everything to you after this. But to know everything, we need to know who wins Group G and who is runner-up. Switzerland in first at the moment, followed by Brazil. Hongo with the cross, Danilo, Toko Akambi, Allison with the save. As I was saying, uh, Switzerland in first, Brazil in second. We'll know everything 
after these next, well, it's now 60, 60 minutes. 61. Anguisa in a bit of a tight spot here. Um, Rafinha takes it. Now Neymar Jr. past the 30-minute mark. 1-0 lead for Brazil. At the moment, Fai takes it for Cameroon. Ab Abu Bakar, the captain, now with the ball. A pass to Togo Akambi. Chupo Moting has it taken from him by Silva. Anguisa to Um. And now Chupo Moting, Silva again. Fred, Vinicius Jr., Neymar Jr. A pass now to Rafinha. And Fred again sends it into the air. Comes down to the feet of Danilo. Danilo looking to make it 2 0. Paqueta, Castelletto takes it and passes to Toko Ikambi. Abu Bakar. Toko Ikambi again. And out in front, it's Allison. Tripping him up here. And goes flying, number 14. And one minute added on. Before halftime, Alexandro and Anguisa. Chubamating. Hongwa moving in, and Cameroon tied up at the end of the half. Abu Bakar with a last minute goal here in the first half. It'll be one to one going into halftime. We've got 45 more minutes to play here at the Lucille Stadium in order to find out who goes through, who wins. It's getting very, very interesting here. I feel like there's been more drama in groups G and H than all the other groups combined, but that's just me. Let me know if anyone's watching this with a YouTube account. Let me know in the comments if you've been following the series, if you feel that way as well, because this has been a very, very dramatic day. And uh, again, I apologize for the gaffe with the Uruguay match. I had no idea that uh, Ghana would go down in the third. They really impressed me. Whatever. Vinicius Jr. with a slow day at the office as we go to halftime. 1-0 lead for... Sorry, no. I'm wrong again. 1-1. Tied up between Brazil and Cameroon after 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, 45 minutes remain in the group stage of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Cameroon won, Brazil won. After halftime, at halftime. Neymar to Paqueta. Not much momentum on that. Onana makes it look easy. Fred with the header to Neymar. Three shots for Cameroon, two for Brazil. That's number three for the World Cup favorites. Neymar sends it into the air. Castelletto. Now Silva gets it back for Brazil. Castelletto again. Rafinha just barely prevents it from going out. Onana makes the catch. And rolls it to Castelletto. Um. Chupamoting. Hongla. Chupa no, Fred takes it. Now Neymar to Vinicius. And Neymar again, back foot to Paqueta. 60 minutes, 60 minutes gone here at the Lucille Stadium. 1-1 tied up at the hour mark. Nkulu with the header. Fred, Paqueta, 
Alexandro, Paqueta, Neymar, Onana with the save, Neymar with the header, and Onana still manages to save it. Unbelievable goalkeeping there as Um comes off for Cameroon. He's replaced by Inchan. Neymar, Vinicius, Hongo with the header, trying to get it away. Some close battles here, close to the goal. And now Marquinhos to Alexandro, Casemiro to Silva. Silva again looking for his opening, looking to break through here. Casemiro, Neymar, Rafinha, Neymar again, Casemiro again takes the shot. Onana with the save. Fai. Honga. Now, Incham, Tokwakambi, Chibamoteng! No. Less than 15 minutes to go here at the Lucille Stadium. Tied up 1-1 one -one between Cameroon and Brazil. Jesus coming on for Rafinha. Substitution made for the Brazilian side. In these final few minutes of the group stage. The entire group stage. And what a group stage it has been. 12 days of soccer to whittle it down to 16 teams. In two days, we'll have eight. Neymar. Now, Jesus puts it in! And Brazil have secured the victory, it seems. Five minutes to go, and the substitutes, along with the coaches, running out onto the field to celebrate. With that win, they have surely clinched their spot in the round of 16. I can't be wrong about that, can I? I hope not. Unbelievable. 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 Gabriel Jesus, the hero for the Brazilians here tonight. And I'm getting word that we will not go over the highlights, the post-game highlights, at the end of this match. We'll just go right back to the International Broadcast Center and uh, get ready for the round of 16. Again, no highlights after this. Right back to the Broadcast Center as we reveal who's going through and who they will face. Two minutes added on. Paqueta, Onana, save is made for sure, and that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the 2022 FIFA World Cup group stage. The round of 16 begins tomorrow, a 2-1 win for Brazil over Cameroon. To close things out, let's go back to the International Broadcast Center to take a look at the round of 16. And with that, the elite remain. Brazil and Switzerland move on to give us the matchups for the round of 16. Tomorrow we've got Ecuador and the USA, Lewandowski in Poland versus Griezmann in France. That should be interesting. Neymar takes on Ronaldo as Brazil battle Portugal and Germany close things out against Belgium. On Sunday it'll be England taking on the Netherlands, followed by Denmark against Lionel Messi and Argentina. Uruguay, led by Luis Suarez, take on Switzerland, and Luka Modric and Croatia battle Japan to finish off the round of 16. Thank you for watching the group stage. We'll be back tomorrow for some high-intensity soccer. At this point, there are only two options. Go big or go home. Good night.